Hello everybody, welcome back to another deep dive here at the North American Bigfoot Center. Today we're going to do a deep dive into a piece of evidence that a lot of you are familiar with, but maybe not the breadth of the evidence that's available. We are going to take a nice close look at the Patterson-Gimlin film site casts. Now, most people know about the Patterson-Gimlin film site. It's, of course, the film of the creature walking from left to right across the sandbar. I think that er you guys know that. Everybody knows that. But a lot of people don't realize how much evidence was gathered at the scene. In fact, it's one of the places where more evidence is gathered than anywhere else in all Bigfoot history. It turns out that when Roger and Bob shot the film of the creature and the thing walked away, they got to work casting two footprints. Those two footprints are right here. This is the right and this is the left. And of course, if you're saying, wait a minute, Cliff, no, you have that backwards. No, no, you got to think of it like these are footprints in the ground, right? So don't get confused about that. A lot of people do. And the right and the left footprints were cast by Roger and Bob that day, October 20th, 1967. After Roger and Bob filmed the creature and poured plaster in two of its footprints, they set about filming various things at the site. But we've never seen it. All this stuff ended up on the second reel of the Patterson-Gimlin film. The second reel has been lost. You see, when Roger and Bob were there, they are filming background stuff for a documentary that Roger wanted to put together. And then the last 58 seconds of the first reel is the Sasquatch walking across the sandbar. And then, of course, the film ran out. While they're at the scene, Roger put a blanket over him and changed out that film for the second reel. And then they started shooting, you know, film of the stuff in the ground. Bob Gimlin told me that uh, they filmed him jumping off of a log to see how deep his footprints would go into the substrate. But we know for sure that somebody filmed the footprints in the ground because that little snippet of footage, two or three, five seconds, survives online, on the internet. I don't know where they got it from, but here it is. In this piece of footage, you can see there are several footprints in the ground and one with plaster in it. So we know that they filmed it after Roger and Bob poured plaster into the footprint. And that footprint is, of course, this one right here. Because you can see it goes left, right, left, right. That's this cast. But check out these other footprints. They're very, very interesting. Look at the flexibility that is evidence in the foot based on the footprint. It's all bendy and stuff, right? That's not all the evidence that was gathered, though. They shot the film on a Friday. Early Friday afternoon is the best guess at this point. But the following Monday, this gentleman named Lyle Laverty stumbled upon the site. He was a timber cruiser at the time. A timber cruiser is a person who basically kind of goes and chooses the logs or the trees that they're going to cut down you know, when the logging company comes through. So he was cruising timber in the area and he stumbled across the footprints and he took photographs of the footprints in the ground. And that's very fortuitous and you'll see why in just a minute. Fast forward nine days or so and Bob Titmus discovers the film site. When Bob Titmus got on the scene, he cast 10 footprints, irregardless of quality. No matter how pretty they looked in the ground, he put plaster in them. That's an amazing feat. Well, no pun intended. It's an amazing feat because these casts give us the most information about the way the Sasquatch's feet interacted with the ground. That's really important because if you notice, Roger and Bob's casts are very, very clean. They just basically look like the bottom of the foot, right? Not a lot of information in here. That's because the early researchers and also some current day researchers have it all wrong. They are casting the cleanest, nicest, prettiest looking footprints because they want to get an idea of what the feet actually look like. That's a mistake. You should cast the messy ones. Yeah, sure, cast a nice one or two if you have lots of plaster and lots of footprints, but cast the messy ones too. The messy ones give us the most information about whether those footprints are real or fake. And these casts made by Bob Titmus, all 10 of them, tell a really amazing story if you have eyes to see. Now, I have three of those footprint casts here. And as it turns out, lucky for us, Lyle Laverty, remember he was on the site the following Monday? Lyle Laverty, it turns out, photographed two of the footprints that Bob Titmus would later go to pour plaster in. This is by far the most famous. Um, I even called this the Laverty cast, even though he didn't cast it, because 
right there. This, the midfoot is very, very flexible and then this raised mound of dirt, the mid tarsal ridge is very evident in this cast. It's probably one of the most famous photographs and casts in the world because of this. It is, it's like the textbook example of midfoot flexibility in Sasquatch feet. But this other cast is nothing to sneeze at either because look at this, same foot, same track line. And what you see here is a, right in this area is a big jumbled mess. But this is one of those casts that Laverty photographed the footprint of in the ground. So let's look at that footprint and you can see that, oh yeah, this is all just jumbled sand that kind of held together as the fore part of the foot pushed backwards and kind of separated everything. So it didn't make a ridge like in this other cast, this sand stuck together in some ways and kind of moved separately, which is why it looks like such a jumbly mess in this area. But when you look at it, especially when you compare the casts, look how well that lines up. If the toes are at the same angle, this ridge is at the same place that this jumbly mess is. It's because it was made by the same feature of the foot, the flexibility at the rear end of the metatarsals at the mid tarsal joint. We have one other cast here and it's a really nice looking cast, but really doesn't tell us a whole lot about the structure of the foot. This is another Titmus cast that we have on display here at the North American Bigfoot Center. But even then it's pretty interesting. We have an example of that same foot here, two nice clean casts. And if we compare these to the other Titmus casts, we can see right where the mid tarsal joint is in this cast. So right here is where the jumbly mess starts to happen. And if I go across, oh yeah, I can feel, there's a raised mound of dirt right here. I can feel the difference in the bone structure from here to here. It's very, very subtle though. Now these frames here show all 10 of the Titmus casts together. Dr. Meldrum has given me these to use as I see fit. And this is a really, really good use of this particular frame. So we can see all 10 of the casts in this composite picture. And of course in this picture, all the casts are moved slightly to 45 degree angle. In this final composite picture, all of the casts have been turned 90 degrees to the plane of the film. And that gives us a really good view at where the midfoot flexibility shows in the cast, the mid tarsal pressure ridges or pressure discs, depending on the substrate at the time. So even though all of these casts, like this one and this one, come from the same foot. Look at the difference in length in the cast, right? Some people say, oh, well that foot's so much larger than this foot. No, 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 no. Because the footprint is not the shape of the foot. It's the shape of the damage done to the ground by the foot as the thing walks by because as the foot comes down and makes contact with the soil and rolls through the motion, the last piece of the foot that's in contact is the fore part of the foot. And that's where the pressure of the push off is as the creature steps forward. And that part of the foot from the mid part of the foot to the toes should be pushed a little bit deeper than the rest of the foot. And it should also be the most true to the size of the actual foot as opposed to the damage in the ground by the foot right? And look at the composite. Look how congruent all 10 of these casts are. You can clearly see from the toes to the mid part of the foot, it's basically the exact same size in every single cast. Even though the heel impression might have been elongated or there's some slippage or pushing in and out or something like that. The heel part of the foot changes from foot to foot to foot to foot, but the fore part of the foot is always the same. And that is some very compelling evidence. This is not the only situation where we see this. We also have the Dr. Meldrum footprint line from 1996 at Dr. Meldrum casts in Five Points, Washington. Let's take a look at those. Here's one of the casts. We actually sell these in the shop if you ever want to get a copy of it, you know, shameless plug. But here's one of the casts that Dr. Meldrum took that day. Looking at the side, you can clearly see that where the midfoot flexibility comes into play when interacting with the substrate. We have two other casts here from the same track line that show just the fore part of the foot, the toe slide, and then the half cast. And look how nicely those are congruent if I line the toes up. 
Now, if I take either one of these and line them up with that full cast that I just showed you, the congruency is amazing. Completely flabbergasting in my opinion. That if this is not real, the hoaxer sure did a bang up job and has a really thorough and complex understanding of primate foot anatomy. And I'll tell you what, man, Paul Freeman, as good a guy as he was, did not have that understanding. But yet, here we are. And then of course, Sasquatches are very rare animals in general. So when there's a bunch of footprint casts from any one particular area, we should be looking to see if we have any recurring individuals from that same place. Maybe the same Sasquatch comes through more often than once, and then we have footprints from a number of different incidents. And that's what we have here. Dr. Meldrum cast these prints in February 1996, but five years earlier, and just a handful of miles away, we have the very famous 1991 trackway, and this is a cast from there. This trackway is almost certainly 95% or more the same Sasquatch making both of these footprints. Sasquatches frequent the same areas. I know I do. I go to the same supermarkets. I go to the same pubs. I go to the same places of work. I frequent the same areas and so do Sasquatches. Five Points is only a few miles away from Mill Creek where this cast was taken. But let's line this one up with these other ones to see if the midfoot is the same. Spoiler alert, it's gonna be. Sure enough, there you go. You can clearly see where the midfoot flexibility is. You can see the entire fore part of the foot is almost exactly congruent, and it shouldn't be exactly congruent because that would indicate stompers of some sort. But you have toe variation in display. You have positioning differences. You have all sorts of stuff, but the general shape is right there because that's where the Sasquatch puts most of the force upon push off when going to the next step. This level of congruency should not be there if Sasquatches are not real animals, but here it is. People ask me, what is the best piece of evidence? And they expect me to say the Patterson-Gimlin film or this one particular cast, but it's not. It's how everything fits together. It's like one puzzle piece at a time, you know? You're doing a jigsaw puzzle and you aren't gonna pick up one piece and say, oh, those are really, really cute cats sitting inside mugs. Look how cute this is. No, no, you have to see how the whole thing lines up together. You have to see how all the pieces fit together with one another. And when you can do that, you can step back a few steps and look at this whole mosaic in front of you and how all the pieces of evidence support and fit well with all the others. That is the most compelling piece of evidence, if you can call it a piece of evidence, of Sasquatches being real animals. And it's in the Patterson-Gimlin film. It's in the uh, Blue Mountain evidence. It's in all the evidence, if you have eyes to see. Thank you very much for listening to me rambling on about my favorite topic in the world, Sasquatch Footprints, and I hope you enjoy these videos. If there's anything you want to see us do a deep dive into, please, please, please leave a comment, send us an email, let us know what you want to see, because we are here for you, just like you are here for us. Your patronage means the world to us. Thank you so much for being a museum member, and anything we can do for you, please let us know. And in the meantime, Keep it as squatchy as possible, please.